Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola. Thanks for joining us again for History Makers. The Golden Bear, Jack Nicklaus, entered the 1980 U.S. Open seeking his record tying fourth U.S. Open title. And after a blistering 63 to open up the proceedings at Baltusrol Golf Club in New Jersey, it seemed it was his to lose. But while he shot a solid 71-70 in the next two rounds, it opened the door for others to catch him on Sunday. Yeah, looking to join Willie Anderson, Bob Jones, and Ben Hogan with four U.S. Open titles, Nicholas was tied with Asao Aoki of Japan through 54 holes, with several others within striking distance, including Tom Watson. We'll now fast forward to the 15th tee with Nicholas leading Aoki by two. It's in the fairway. He ought to you know, like is, it. I'll tell you, it's not only in the fairway, but it's long. It's right at the at the front uh, part of the second bunker, uh, that bunker on the right. And I'll tell you, that's a tremendous drive. Yeah. Oh, but if you pace it off, it would be within a pace of the center of the of the fairway too. That is very true. Aoki now, two strokes behind. He's got to get that putter working with the magic it had the first three days if he's going to catch Nicholas. gone the other way left to right but played a good drive it's only about 40 yards short of Jack's 40 yards I'll tell Boy, you Jack, Jack really hit pressure. a big drive here uh, I watched the Watson and Hinkle come through here and uh, Watson drove about where Aoki did and Hinkle who is tremendously long wasn't much further uh, Jack is just really unloaded he's only got uh, maybe 150 yards into this hole there's the relationship between the two balls Jack Nicholas within shot now of winning his fourth open to join Willie Anderson, Bobby Jones, and Ben Hogan. Only two men have ever won a total of seven U.S. and British Opens yeah. as we watch Keith Fergus. Those two men, having been Harry Barton, who invented the grip you play golf with probably, uh, I mean the hand grip on the club, and Bobby Jones. Well, if Jack wins today, he'll have seven, three British Opens and four U.S. Opens. Not a bad record for a young man from no, Columbus. No. Fergus from now on, on 17, the longest par 5 in the history of the U.S. Open, 630 he yards. He to drop him. He got the free drop. He, he did, did get, get the, the free drop. drop. You can see yep. it yep. back there. You see a little graphic of the 17th, but this is uh, should be a short shot here, Bill. What's he got about a wedge? Uh, Nothing more than 100 that. yards or so. Diabolical pin placement, I might add. <laughs> Downwind, is it? Yes. Yeah. He's got a lot of sand between him and Green. Sound very, very, like a little very. fat. Ooh. Oh. Well, didn't no sound sooner Chris. mention the sand, and there it is. That's the first shot he's hit today that would be a little questionable about hit, hitting it strong enough. That. No matter what Keith does the rest of the day or how he finishes or whatever, he should feel proud of his play today. Now, a lot of good things did not happen to him. He just played well and nothing happened as far as getting the ball in the hole. It's not actually. Now, Tom Watson down the 17th fairway. He's just had a birdie. He's three under par. He's three off the lead. He almost has to birdie 17 and 18. Okay, second shot, just fine. He gets that total on the board, Jim. Uh, two more birdies, 275, which would tie the record now held by Lee Trevino and Jack Nicholas. That's something to do. Get that rec get that score up there and let the other guy shoot at it. Hinkle is also three under. He's tied with Watson, remember. Puts his 215 pounds behind it. Didn't seem to like it. John? No, I think you might hit a little heavy, uh, yeah. Jim, but it's right, you know, right where he wants it. To yeah. Pitch it. Okay. You see Keith Fergus up ahead looking down into the bunker. Either in, it could be possibly buried into the high grass, but I think it's in the bunker. Here's Aoki. Tied for second with Fergus. He's in trouble. Boy, what yeah. a beautiful shot he has played. I'll tell you, it went over the green. I, that's the third day in a row he's knocked it over the green. Uh, just amazing, but it was such a pretty looking shot in the air. Now back to Fergus in the bunker. This is his fourth shot. Can't afford a bogey here. 
Now you can see how close the pin was, so he was playing a little too cozy, perhaps. There. Yeah, I thought he caught it just a little heavy, Jim. The sound wasn't as crisp as it generally is on a good shot. Mm -hmm. There it is. That's going to be a tough shot. One. Not a bad shot, though, from where he was. Looked like he made it. I'm sure the ball plugged there. He had to have a little bit of an awkward life. Now Nicholas with his second shot after a tremendous effort from the tee. See how he looks at it. Pin cut to the right. Looks left. Start looked like it started left, Rossi. It is pretty well left. It's going to catch the green, though, David. Okay. Safely on left one back. Side. Yep. It's your typical inland uh, or parkland kind of course, as opposed to the seaside links that we'll be seeing in the British Open in a few weeks, two weeks from now, by the way. Well, let's watch Fergus. U.S. Men's Seniors Open, I was going to say, that's all. At the winged foot. Mm -hmm. Very important putt, Keith, to stay four under and just two shots back. Can reach 18 today. He just hasn't made anything. Nope, he just, cannot make anything. Just nothing. So that'll be a bogey six. He taps that in, which will drop him to three under par for the tournament and a tie with Watson and Hinkle, one behind Aoki and three behind Jack Nicholas. Lee Trevino has finished with a round of 74. He bogeyed the last hole. A total of 283 or three over par. He'd started the day at one under. That's exactly what he shot in 1967. He hadn't improved at all, has he? <laughs> That's right. Mark Hayes. And there's a man who's had a bad day putting, too. He, yes, just he certainly has. Hasn't had anything good, even almost dropped his putter there. This is Started the day four under, is now even. Now Fergus needing this for the bogey six. And with everything breaking away from the mountain, you have to make sure all of them a little bit extra. Even the smallest putt can have a subtle little break. Yeah. If you happen to start it just a little bit offline and, and you're not uh, really paying attention to your business, you could miss it. Okay, he did not, however. And they'll move on to the 18th hole, three under par for the tournament, one over for the day. That's the first real mistake that Fergus has made all day was his third shot on that hole. Now, Aoki, who had a fine second shot, but ran a little too far through the green. Well, he knocked in one not dissimilar from this for a birdie not too long ago. You can tell he must be a pretty good chipper of the ball. When you start plumb bobbing your chips, you kind of expect him to make them. That's right. Imagine. <laughs> That's a good attitude, by the way. Okay. People watching around the world live in Great Britain right now and in Australia, soon to be live in Japan for the final holes. Nice. Nicely done. Yeah. Aoki, who two years ago won more money playing golf than anybody in the world. That's right. More than Tom Watson, more than anybody. Hinkle now with his third shot on the 630-yard 17th. We haven't said so much about him, but if he could get two birdies the last couple of holes, being there with That's got to hurry. Took a good Boy, time. Did hurry yeah. just enough, John. Yes. There you see Ron Hinkle. Nearly two holes behind um, Watson and Aoki. They are they? The 17th, they, you know, they are behind, are they, Peter? Two holes behind? Okay. There's Nicholas. This for a birdie. Just want to get this close, though, Jim. This birdie is not, of course, something you like to have, but. Yesterday, he had three putted this green, about the same sort of putt, same length. Just get it up there where you can look at this. A little fast. Still good, though. Oh, yeah. Good putt. Yep. So. 18th tee. 18th tee. Another par five, the final par five, 542 yards long. Keith Fergus. Boy, has he played well. You can say it again, an exclamation point, Dave, except for that one little lapse. Another fine tee shot by Keith Fergus. Well, I know he's disappointed walking down there, Bill, with, you know, with a great chance to win. He still has a chance to win. Just make a birdie here. But he's, he's going to feel proud about his finish here when he looks back on it. Back to the leaders. 
and they are the leaders now. Nicholas first, Aoki second by himself. He's not tied with anybody now. now earlier you talked about match play, Jim, and here we are. You get down to it in a way, the last few holes, very important for Aoki to make this putt and make Jack have to make his. Of course, he has to make it anyhow, but just a little added pressure for you. Get That's right. You another little beverage the next <laughs> tee <laughs> so you can yeah. keep talking. So what we have here is the greatest player of his time against a man most people agree is the greatest match player of this moment. This man here, Aoki, winner of the World Match Play Championship two years ago, runner up last year. And you have them literally head to head now over these last holes as number one and two people in the tournament. Now, of course, somebody could catch him again. Runner up to Bill Rogers. Last year. In Texarkana, mm -hmm. right. Okay, he's made his part. Those of you watching around the world, if you wonder up where Texarkana is, it's on the border, as you'd guess, between Texas and Arkansas. Right. Big putt for Hinkle for a birdie on 17 that would tie him with Aoki. He certainly do. Hinkle, start of the day, five under, now three under, or two over on today's round. Three behind Nicholas. Nicholas, remember, still has those two big long ones to negotiate. You can look on that as a problem or as an opportunity for birdies. You can go either way. Big par putt. All right. Right in the heart. Three holes to go to put himself in the record books yet again in another way. Tom Watson has not won the Open. He's on 17. Putting for a birdie, however. Well, so he has only one more opportunity for a birdie or for a possible eagle. There have been eagles in this tournament on the 18th hole. And they're downwind today. And a player that hits the ball as far as time and uh, can, can reach the green easily. Say easily with two good shots, two of his best shots to get there. Watson finished birdie eagle the day before yesterday. Had four birdies in a row in the back nine yesterday. He's not been able to mount that kind of a charge today. Hinkle in for the par five that keeps him along with Watson at three under and also along with Keith Fergus. Those three tied for third place behind Nicholas and Aoki. So they move along. At Baldus Rolf, still no sign of the promised thunder showers, the possible promised thunder showers. Looks at this point like we're going to make it. Ten minutes to six here in the eastern part of the United States. Now Fergus with his second shot after a big tee shot. Yeah. Trail. From that point, Jim, he's about 235. You're shooting up the hill a little bit, and he can reach the green with a good shot. And he Lot won't to... hold back, Dave. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure he's not going to hold back, Bill. If he ever took a run at it, now is the time. Slight downhill lie. Started a little bit his left. Started left. That's where it is. Get a good Going. kick off that. And he did, but it, I thought it might kick a little more to the right than it did. A good shot, though. Yep, yep. Hit a ball that hard. It's uh, Your accuracy is not maybe as good as you'd like it to be. Hit that a good 240. Now, Nicholas on the 16th tee. This is the last par three being played up 165 yards today. It's a two-stroke lead. Yeah. Hit on ball. There it is, on the green. Good shot. Really a good shot. Boy, he's played well today, too, Jim. I'm sure the last thing on Jack's mind, really, is the extra 50000 he can win from a golf magazine. It has nothing to do with the official money here if he finishes with an even par round of 70 today to break the open record by a stroke. He is on that pace right now. There's $55,000 first prize money, money in the open itself. Aoki.
Look at this shot. And there you Good see that one. Too. Each with a chance for a birdie. We're going to take a break, but we'll be back. There's Keith Fergus on the 18th green, the 72nd hole of this year's United States Open Golf Championship. Fergus at three under par, three strokes behind Jack Nicholas. There's the majestic clubhouse and the, the thousands gathered round looking at the 18th green. Watson, Fergus and Hinkle, all three under. There's Fergus, who's hit the ball very well all day. Hasn't holed a putt. This is his third shot on this five-par 18th hole. A little one just from the rough on the very edge of the green. And what a little gem. Oh, my. Well, that was a great shot. Now, back to the 16th, Jack Nicholas, putting for a two. It's not turning. Well, that's very sweet and very smooth, right to the whole side. Jack pops it in. Another par, he remains six under, and the strain beginning to show on that Nordic face. And why not? It's been a hard, long battle, and golf is a rather pedestrian game, and you get all sorts of thoughts washing in and out of your mind, and the concentration has to be long and enormous. The strain telling Aoki, looking at the grass, looking to see, gathering his thoughts. Trying to gain maximum concentration for the job in hand. He's held a couple of testing six and seven foot putts today, Aoki, but we haven't seen any of those long monsters rattling into the hole, such as we've seen over the first three days of this great event. Back to the 18th, Mark Hayes, who was going along very well before today, but another unhappy time. That's in for a part of him. Lee Trevino home in 40 for round of 74. Very disappointing end for Trevino. Now back to Aoki. For a two at the 16th, and again. Fergus for his birdie at the 18th. Yeah, well done. Good four to finish with for Keith Fergus. Fine championship for him. Four under par. Round of 70. It's 276. And a little bit of disappointment showing on his face because he knows how near he is. Aoki knocked his in. Here's Watson at the 18th, having missed the fairway yet again. Three wood, Peter. Yeah. Killed, it. Killed it. Oh, it is a marvelous stroke from out of the rough. Huge blow from Tom Watson. Just as you see, off the back of the green. Tremendous shot. How far was that, John Schroeder? Hinkle's hitting a three iron. How far was that shot, do you reckon, that Watson hit there? That was a mighty blow. Well, he had 230, 230 to the front and 250 to the flag. 250 yards. My word. Well, he's over the green. That's a tremendous hit. Now, Hinkle is huge hitter. Three iron, about 215 to the front edge. Backing off. Little, the crowd's a little excited after that shot Watson hit. 
back to the 17th. Jack Nicholas' tee shot. Two par fives to finish with, Nicholas. Two ahead. Center. That's knocked a bit off this hole, which measures 630 yards. He's hit every drive purely on this back nine, Peter, under this pressure. Yes, one thing yesterday, Frank, in the middle or towards the, the middle uh, uh, of his round, he had a few wayward tee shots, Jack Nicklaus, yesterday, but not today. Here's Aoki. That's another good looking drive. Again, maybe 50 yards behind Jack this time. On this 17th hole, as we say, play you play to sort of two island fairways. As we take a look at Lon Hinkle's second shot with a three iron to the 18th green. Yes, sir. Well, that's a tremendous shot. Just pitched on the edge of the green, and he has a putt for an eagle three. And what excitement there is still left in store in this year's Open Championship. We're back again. We've had the tension all day. Soon the high drama begins. Here's Aoki now. Second shot on the 630-yard 17th hole, the longest hole in the history of the U.S. Open. Looks fine. Looks right. perfect. Yep, just lot, where he'd want to be. A lot easier than yesterday, where he had a lot of trouble. First three or four shots. Okay, Aoki playing with Nicholas. Nicholas with a two-stroke lead over Aoki and Keith Fergus, who just birdied the 18th hole. Here is Jack after a tremendous tee shot with his second. Looking at him from straight down. It's an unusual ang angle. Does it tell us anything about the swing? I think it could help you a lot looking at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rossi? Well, it's perfect. It's uh, you, you didn't see him with that wood, though, I'll tell you no. that. That looked no. like maybe a four <laughs> or five iron. <laughs> you remember yesterday, do you? And I'm sure he did, too. Or he didn't need that much, really. You're still, still going to have a wedge to the green, right, on your third shot? Now, this was just uh, about 35 seconds ago. Tom Watson on 18 had put his second shot on the par five hole over the green. This for the eagle that would move him from three under to five under and one shot out of the lead with a chance. Fine effort. Wouldn't quite break enough. Coming down off the mountain, you would have thought it would, might have broken a little Same more. as Keith Fergus. That ball tends to stay straight there for some reason. It doesn't break as much as the players are playing it. Now, Lon Hinkle, who has a much more realistic chance for an eagle, putting uphill. He's on the green, not too far from the hole. And a funny thing, Jim, he has not made a birdie all day. He's made two bogeys. He's two over par for the day. And uh, for Lon Hinkle, that is a bad day not to make any birdies. He generally makes a lot of them. But this is an eagle putt and could really help him. It's hard enough. Mm, no. Oh, just stayed out there. Now, if he makes that for a birdie, he will move to four under in a tie with Aoki and Fergus. But remember, Aoki still has two chances for birdies in 17 and 18. And he made both of those yesterday. And picked up two shots on Jack. Yeah. And he's two strokes behind Jack now. Big man born in Flint, Michigan, now living in Dallas. Gets down with a birdie on the 18th hole. One after another, they're coming in with birdies. Not the Eagles that it appears, at any rate, that they needed to have a chance to tie. So he finishes four under for the tournament, does Lon Hinkle. One over on today's round. 276, Jim, that's the third best score ever shot in open history. That's uh, ties what Hogan shot, Fergus shot, and now Tom Watson just shot. That's right, Tom Watson also with a birdie going to four under par. As Dave said, there are three men, only one stroke off the open record, and it appears that none of them are even gonna tie for the title. 
Should there be a tie, there will be an 18-hole playoff tomorrow. There's Bill Fleming getting ready for any interviews we might have a chance to do. And here's Aoki with Nicholas, with all that sand between him. Let's go, in fact, to Bill Fleming right now. I'm with Keith Fergus right now, uh, Jim, and he has an opportunity, I guess, to at least unbend a little bit and explain exactly what happened at 17. Well, I just, you know, I took a drop. I knocked it in a hazard and I dropped and I walked up and I saw where the pin was and, and you know, it's a blind shot and, you know, I thought I had to feel, but evidently I didn't because when I hit it, you know, I thought I hit it hard enough and I got up there, I wasn't even close. So, you know, it's one of those things that came at a bad time. Bill, excuse me, but Aoki just hit and we saw him a tremendous shot quite close to the pin on 17. If you could just hold it there with Keith for a minute. Yes make his forbearance while we watch Nicholas, the leader in the tournament with his third shot on the par five hole. As you see how closely that hole has been placed to the front of the green and downwind makes it that much tougher. Rossi, about how long a shot does he have? He has a shot of about 80 yards, David, and all he has to do, it looks now, is to get the ball on the green. You know, you, you just don't want to leave it short. That's the one thing, and uh, I would imagine he'll pitch it by the hole, if anything. Of course, earlier we saw Keith Fergus do just that, leave it short, and it, in the end, appears to have cost him his chance. Jack walking away, wanting to check the wind again. Yeah. Yeah. Little left to right, pointing out to Angelo. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> nice to have somebody with you out there you can talk to. Oh, him. man, <laughs> sometimes you're really looking around for a friend, Jim, let me tell you. Very good looking shot, very high, good shot. To the right of the flag, about 20, 25 yep. feet it looks yep. like. Well, I'll tell you, he didn't just go for the middle of the green. Let's go back down to Bill and Keith now. We're just chatting here, Jim, about the round itself. Uh, Keith, you certainly can't be disappointed. You realize that in this tournament, you've shot 66 and 370s. That's remarkable, a 276. You must be very proud. Yeah, but I played, you know, I played very well. I hit a lot of good shots. I, I didn't putt quite as well. I putted real well the first day, and then the last three, I had made the putts that I felt like I should have, and that, you know, that's the difference. You know, there's one thing unique about this U.S. Open this year. They did not carry leaderboards for the first time, but they did have the standings at the end of every hole. And therefore, the players have been able to know all through the 18 holes where they stood. And you know at one point you were tied for the lead. Well, I think it was uh, right after 9 or 10. I was right. 5 under, and, and I knew Jack was 5. and didn't last very long. I bogey 10. <laughs> but I played well. And, you know, it's, I can't be disappointed. Now, as uh, we view the things coming up here, it's not all not lost, of course, because you're still just uh, two strokes off. Anything could happen. So, Jim, back to you, and we'll watch here patiently. Okay, that was Keith Fergus. He's got to feel proud. Nicholas and Aoki now. And in the end, it comes down to this. The two men who have played together for four days are now having match play for the last two holes. And the advantage is very strongly to Nicholas. Aoki here must gain two strokes. That would mean two birdies for him or possibly a birdie for him, bogey for Nicholas. It could happen. Events coming up two weeks uh, from this weekend, the first United States Golf Association Men's Senior Open Championship will be played at Wingfoot, right across the river over in Westchester County, on the East Course, where they've played the Women's Open twice, not the West Course, where, where Hale Irwin won his championship. The Women's Open on Saturday, July 12th, Sunday, July 13th. I don't know where you'll be next Sunday, David, but I'll be up in Toronto, North American Soccer League, yeah? Oh, yeah. L.A. at Toronto, international meeting, and an international meeting right here. Nicholas, USA, Aoki, Japan. A very thorough plumb bob job. Right. You say, thought you said that Nicholas uh, had the advantage, he has the advantage because he has a two stroke lead uh, with Aoki there getting his touch as he did yesterday. He finished very strongly putting. He missed, uh, didn't make some starting out. And it seems as though he's done the same thing here again. Jack knows, you know, you got to get it close. You know, you want to make it, of course. You have to figure this man, you know, 50 or 60 percent of the time is going to make the putt he has. Yeah. Feel like, well, you're going to have a one stroke lead if I just two putt go in the last hole. And of course, anything can happen in one shot lead. 
One thing that does not seem to have changed is as you look at the eyes of Nicholas is that total concentration 13 years ago it was just like this. It's for a birdie. But Jack Nicklaus, just when he needed it, seeking the fourth U.S. Open Championship, has knocked it in for a birdie. Yeah. So and for the first time, that broad <laughs> smile broke out. Well, it's been tough. He's been leading the tournament, or tied for the lead since Thursday, and that's a lot of pressure, Jim. Isn't that exciting? A lot of pressure. That magazine better get that 50,000 <laughs> out of it. If he pars 18, it's a brand new record. How about that? He set the record here in 67 and he breaks it, or looks like he might break it in uh, 1980. Another look at it. Even if he bogeys 18, he still breaks the record. Now. Well, this is a little bit of what Aoki, Aoki did to him yesterday. Made a long oh, shot here. Boy. Uh, look at that. Wasn't that great, the joy in his face? For a man that's finished, <laughs> or about finished, and listen to the crowd at 18, uh, I wonder if they'll ask him if he's going to retire after <laughs> today. Uh, just found life begins at 40, James. Life begins at 40 for Jack Nicklaus. The marvelous thing is it obviously means just as much to him at age 40 as he did when he first played in the U.S. Open as a teenager. Well, it's uh, he had a chance to win uh, the first, well, not the first time I saw him, but he had a chance to win in 60 also when he holds the amateur record for the U.S. Open, too, oh, 282. Almost won it, just I behind know. Arnold Palmer when Arnold Palmer won his only Open. That's right. Palmer, of course, lost in, what, three playoffs in and the second. he was unlucky not to win a, a number of U.S. Opens. Again, the odd position of the putter, putter, the heel down, the toe up in the air. He's got to make this, Jim, to have a chance, I would say. And he did it! The man does not shake. The unflappable Mr. Aoki maintains that slim chance of tying for the Open. Should Nicholas bogey 18 and Aoki birdie it, they would tie. Should Aoki get an eagle and Nicholas get a par? They would tie. I said it looks like a victory parade, but it's going to be one uh, with many security guards around the outside to make sure yeah. nothing goes wrong. Huh? Figuratively speaking. And it doesn't get very excited. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Four opens. If obviously all yeah. this is if things continue the way they are to join Hogan and Jones and Anderson. Within a single hole of doing it. And we take a look at the 18th hole, dog leg to the left. Must stay away from the left-hand side there. Good driving hole from an elevated tee, and today it's playing downwind, can be reached. You've seen a number of players knock it either on the green or through the green. Yep. Then you shoot up to this 18th green. You know, Dave, the last three major championships have been won by non-American players. If you think about it, the British Open last year by Ballesteros, David Graham, an Australian, although a member of the U.S. Tour and now resident in the States. An Australian won the PGA. Ballesteros won the Masters. But the flag is being carried by a rather capable representative right now. I think they sent the main man out this week. <laughs> it's really great, though, Jim, if you could just imagine to think this could be this man's fourth U.S. Open title. Eight. All he's done for golf, all he's meant to golf. 18th major championship. This tee shot has a lot to do with it. Par five hole, remember, 542 yards. Bob? Well, they like it up there. I have not spotted it yet. A little hard to spot it against this It's guy. perfect. Uh, I don't believe he went with the driver, though. Uh, he is pretty sense. well back, really, uh, but I think he probably played a three-wood off the tee. So Jack may be going to get on in three rather than trying to Well, he, two. In, in 67, he, he hit a bad drive here at the last hole when mm -hmm. he was trying to sort of lay up. He said he didn't quite know what to do and had to hit a one-iron on his third shot because he got a bad lie over in the rough, which he might get. What credit this man deserves to play Head to head. Go get him, Jack. Come on. Eye to eye with Jack Nicholas and to stay right with him. Only two strokes behind. We're going to come back for the finish, and it'll be live.
While we have a moment here, I'd like to introduce Tom Watson and Lon Hinkle. Both of them played their hearts out. They didn't win it, but it was a great championship. Tom? Well, we both shot 276, and as you said before, that was the tournament record for many, many years. Ben Hogan held it. And this week, uh, we just have the greatest player who probably ever played the game winning the golf tournament, and it was, almost, it was impossible to catch him. Lon? I'll just echo what Tom just said. Okay, second shot into the crowd at the 18th. Aoki, not noted for his long hitting, could not reach the green in three. One felt that if a miracle was going to happen here, or Jack Nicholas was going to fall completely by the wayside, he would have needed to have got an eagle three. Aoki in the crowd short. Now, Nicholas, there you see the hole in front. He's going to play up short with an iron, one suspects. He's way back. He's a couple of strokes ahead. And what a great moment. Pretty lofted iron, Peter. Maybe a four, maybe a three. And he wow. hit it beautifully. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, fine shot. Just right into the position A. It's been a great week for me to be with you for your championship. I'm very, very privileged to have been here to watch this great, great man. <laughs> Since a small field of 11 teed off in Newport, Rhode Island in 1895, the U.S. Golf Association has been conducting the National Championship of American Golf, the U.S. Open. Only three men have won the title four times in their careers. The first was Willie Anderson. Just after the turn of the century, he won four times in five years, then died at age 30. Four times, Anderson won the Open, a record unchallenged until the Roaring Twenties. Then, this quiet man from Atlanta, Bobby Jones, won four times, retired at age 28. Four times, Jones won the Open. It wouldn't happen again until after World War II. Then another quiet man from Texas, Ben Hogan, did it, winning three times after his terrible automobile crash. And now comes Jack Nicholas of Ohio, striding the fairways of Baltus Roll, seeking to join the most select company in golf, those who have won the Open four times. He makes the great effort today at age 40, tied for the lead with 18 holes yet to play. Anderson, Jones, Hogan, and Nicholas, We'll walk every step of the way with Jack today, and when day is done, we'll know the answer. So we set it at the beginning of this long afternoon, and it still applies. With just these few steps to go, Jack Nicholas, it appears, is going to do it. A little flip under the green and two putts should suffice. Aoki in trouble on the golfer's right-hand side. Hit it back in the crowd, and now everyone flooding in, trying to get a look so that they can say in the future, I was there, I saw it with my own eyes. They'll talk about it. It will be written about with the feats of Bobby Jones. Jones winning his fourth open at Interlochen in Minneapolis. With Ben Hogan winning his fourth open at Oakmont outside Pittsburgh. And now Nicholas at Baldus Roll. Only one man ever won the open twice on the same golf course. And that was Willie Anderson, the first man to win four. He won one open here, but he won the two at Myopia in Massachusetts. Now the applause just beginning to build. They'll cheer again when he comes up. There he is, on the, walking up onto the green. This is not the final big roar yet, not until he puts that ball on the putting surface. And, Jim, just a little note for you, with all the history that Baltus Roll has had, six times hosting the Open and so many things, in 1936, it was Ben Hogan's first U.S. Open here, and in 1967, he played his last U.S. Open here. Nicholas's name now unquestionably in the books with... Those of Harry Varden and J.H. Taylor and James Braid from the old days. His name with old Tom Morris and young Tom Morris. Walter Hagen, Bobby Jones, Ben Hogan, Sam Snead, Byron Nelson. And perhaps, perhaps, when all is, well, it will never be done, but maybe a hundred years from now they'll be saying still that Jack Nicholas was the greatest of them all. Well, when you look at the record book, see what a person's done. It's uh, pretty hard to dispute that. You can get into some pretty hot little arguments about who's the best at whatever you want to pick out. And now Aoki. And he's had a great tournament, Jim. He should feel very proud. As you say, they've played four rounds together. This is the 72nd hole, and only two strokes separate the two men at this point. Not too many people in the New York area even know who Aoki was when he came here this week, but they've received him marvelously. Aoki waiting now for the crowd to settle down. They're beginning to celebrate Nicholas's victory, and it hasn't happened yet. 
but by and large, they really have been extremely well behaved here. Oh, yeah. It's just, well, when you see history being made, you know as Aoki's shot is up, and it's a good-looking shot. Oh, is it ever? Is it ever? Look at it. Unshakable to the end. He had backed up a lot of that, I want to tell you. Well, if he makes that for a birdie, Jack must make sure of his par. Win by a stroke. Here is Nicholas's third shot. Shouts it down in front. Let's just have quiet. All right. It's on the green. And look at it. Well, huh? Pulled up on him. But that should certainly be negotiable in two putts. But it still must be done. The crowd now going to be difficult to control, but they are coming no, no further than the edge of the green. Interesting. There are no gallery ropes now. They've gotten beyond all that. And yet, very much as in the in the British Open, they're going to be so close to Jack Nichols, closer than I've ever seen them in the U.S. Open on the final hole. Well, as you point out, uh, they have been very good this week, Jim. It's just the excitement of seeing this man not only set a new uh, Open record, possibly if he two putts, he could even three putt from there and, and set a new record. But uh, uh, to see now, by the way, we talked about excuse me that golf ma that. The offer from a golf magazine of fifty thousand dollars for breaking the seventy-two hole record. If Aoki makes this putt, he goes six hundred for the tournament, and he gets fifty thousand. That's right. They yep. pay everybody that does it. Yep. Plus the second prize money here. Oh, twenty-nine five. I believe it is. Yes, twenty-nine thousand five hundred. We'll give him seventy-nine five for the for the weekend. Now it's a lot of yen. But the sense of history really is much stronger than the sense of money here today. There they are. Some have given up. They'll not get a look. And around the world, people are looking at the television screen. In Japan, now live. In Great Britain. In Australia. All over North America. It's been a year of great events. And the Winter Olympics and the hockey team. Jack did look at Aoki, uh, Jim, when he came on the green to ask him, uh, you know, to kind of say, hey, would you like to putt out first? Because if I happen to make this, you may not have a chance. And he declined. I was a little surprised hmm. at that, uh, that he didn't go ahead and putt out. Jack now. But if he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. He can what? wait to see what Jack does. Nicholas with... Well, that's a little match play type thing, perhaps. Huh? No, I, I, no, I don't. <laughs> if you're doing it, you're doing it to the wrong man. <laughs> All right. Yes. <clears throat> this for the birdie. A round of 68. You should make it, I believe. That right? That's right. It would be a 68. It's done. Made it. It's over. He's accomplished it. The fourth U.S. Open, and now the crowd running in. And Jack say, hold it. Wait a minute. The man has to put out here for second place in the U.S. Open. Angelo is caddy hugging him. I've never seen Jack really any happier. And now, like the king of the game that he is, he quiets his subjects. Quiets his subjects and says, and now, Mr. Oki, if you please. Oki for a birdie, remember. That would bring him in at six under. Jack finishing at eight under. Aoki will finish second. Even if it takes him two to get down. Yeah, but a very big putt. I don't oh, know yeah. whether he's aware of what it means. Of course, second is uh, formality at this point, unless he were to faint or something. Yeah. But and if he doesn't give himself a good chance there, let the people give him a chance, he would be sick if he found out he missed his putt and cost him 50,000 extra. 27,000 people gathered around. Knock it in. Get in. And That's so he did for $29,500 second place money plus 50000 for a special offer, not a part of the official prize money of the U.S. Open. 
And there's Jack Nicholas. He also got 55,000 plus 50, or will get. Chuck Simpson, the general chairman there, the man with the white hair, who's will done Nicholson. a great job. Will Nicholson, president of the USGA, the man with the sunglasses. Will Nicholson just took over this year. Sandy Tatum, the retiring president, was not here. That's kind of a custom with them to let the new man take over. This Sandy, I'm sure, watching in California. There's the man. A new U.S. Open record of 272. Only nine men have either led or been tied for the lead all the way in the U.S. Open. One of those previous winners to do it was Jack Nicholson in 1972 at Pebble Beach. And now he's done it again with a 63 the first day. Followed by a 71, a 70, and a 68 today. Now he must check the scorecard. Everybody can't wait to congratulate him. But he's got to check it. number one. Don't worry. He'll stay there until he makes sure he's got it absolutely right. Had to be a New York voice that you heard saying, hey, Tom Watson, congratulations. Way to go, number one. There's Watson in the blue shirt. Yep. Angelo the caddy. Well, for a, lot, for a man that a lot of people have written off, uh, 272 is not too bad a score. And now on to Muirfield, the golf course where he's uh, played well before. And we're going to be coming back here again live to wrap it up. Nicholas wins. There's Jack Nicholas with, is that the youngest youngest son, right? Certainly is, yeah. and what a Father's Day gift huh, that Jack gave to himself. What a Father's Day present, that's right. Gave it to himself and his family. Knowing Jack, I would think he'd probably celebrate with a quiet dinner with, with Barbara and young Mike, isn't it? I think, and maybe I a think couple of friends, but uh, certainly if he wants it, he's the toast of the town. New York is his. We're 35 miles from Times Square. Listen to this, the chant, Jack, Jack, Jack. Last time we heard that was USA, USA. That's right. A year of great celebrations of sport. The Olympics, the Philly winning the Derby. Now Jack Nicholas winning his fourth. Isn't that great? Is that pure oh, delight? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well. You said it, Dave. Life begins at 40. There he is holding back the crowd, but it looks like he's <laughs> almost. Where's Rich? Well, uh, people well. got a little excited, and I, I, in a way, I don't blame them there. We got a message that Jack is back. I think most people know that by now. That's a message Jack delivered by hand. I think that's young Michael that's here. Mike, I think, yeah, that's Mike, right. Mike Nicholas. He brings different kids on different occasions. When Mike picked one he can remember for the rest of his young life. Just checking over that score. He's just got to do it. Uh, ABC, World News tonight, Sunday, coming up very shortly here. As we wait, we remind you that our executive producer is Rune Arledge, who's been down there at the compound today. Produced by Chuck Howard, our directors Terry Jastrow, Jim Jeanette, and Bob Goodrich. Technical directors Wink Gunther, John Allen, Les Weiss, and Mike Blazo. Associate producers today Ben Harvey and Amy Knox. Associate directors Bob Lanning, Bob Hirsch, and Rob Biner. There is the scorecard that will go into the, into the golf history books. Perhaps one day we'll end up at Golf House in New Jersey, or maybe just in a frame in the Nicholas household. Well, things like that, Jim. I wonder if Jack has the other three for the last round. Remember, he won here 13 years ago at Baldus Roll. And he won at Pebble Beach in 1972. This is fourth Open Championship. Again, that other statistic that only three men now have won a total of seven U.S. and British Opens. Harry Varden, Bobby Jones, and Jack Nicklaus. And you think, too, Jim, he's won 18 major championships. Most players, and I mean very good players, don't win 18 tournaments in their career. And that's what that's that's really remarkable when you think about it. And an argument when you want to argue who's who was sure. the best player, who is the best player of all time. Now that, they're waving at the cameras, I think, the crowd there while they wait for Jack. Uh, well, Hubert Green, after he shot 65 yesterday and had eight threes in a row for a new open record, uh, was asked in the press, do you think you can catch Jack? He said, look, I'm six shots behind Jack Nicklaus. He said, there's no way I can do it. He said, he's won more major championships than I've won tournaments. <laughs> and Hubert Green is no slouch of a golfer. He's won 16 tournaments. Jack's now won 18 majors. That lady so, scorer there, checking over with Aoki. Now they're chanting Jack is back outside the scoring tent. The meticulous 
double check. Let's have another look at the last putt. Today, it was Nicholas, by the way, birdieing the last two holes to wrap it up. Yesterday, Aoki did it to him to get into a tie. No question about it. All the way to that slight hillside lie. And then the traffic cop job on the crowd, <laughs> aided by a few other uniformed assistants, and the congratulations of Angelo Archia. They've come many miles by foot together. And then Aoki. Can only be happy for that man, Jim. Now they're chanting A-O-Key, A-O-Key. <laughs> Not quite the right pronunciation, but it'll do. <laughs> for the man who finished second. It's well, a great scene. Aoki is a, is a very nice man, Jim. We, we didn't yes. talk maybe so much about that aspect. I played golf with him. And uh, not when he was the player that he is now. And certainly he should be proud and all his countrymen should feel proud that this man shot the be second best score ever shot in a U.S. Open. And unluckily, another man happened to beat that record. Remember the old Senator record of 275 was set here by Jack Nicklaus in 67 and equal by Lee Trevino the next year at Oak Hill in Rochester. We'll be at Oak Hill later this summer for the PGA Championship, That's in right. fact. Be another fine tournament. They've made a couple of changes there since uh, tournaments were there last. As we look at some of the scores. Yep. Craig Stadler sloughed off a little bit today after a fine 69. Matt yesterday. McGowan played well. Joe Inman, good, good tournament for Joe. Long golf course. Jack continues to fill up. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if you wouldn't have a little beverage now, not to touch anything but some sort of soft drink. But uh, there's our man, Bill. Okay, okay, Bill, you, you got it. Jack, this has to be the greatest moment in your life. Bill, I'll tell you, the people here have been fantastic, and I just, I can't believe the, you know. But you've done it? Yeah, on the back nine I played, because I played the back nine, well, Aoki played it stroke for stroke with me, exactly the same. We both shot 33, three under, and uh, he was tough, and I knew that putt at 17 was just really a big putt, because I, it allowed me to play 18 the way I wanted to play 18, not the way I might have to play 18. I'll tell you, I feel fantastic, Bill. It's been a long time. Jack, the emotion here is just so deep that you have to have a catch in your throat. You have to have a tear in your eye. I got one. <laughs> Especially when Barb and little Michael came up here, it must bring back so many memories to you, all the way back to 62 when you won the first one. The thrill is still as big. Oh, Bill, the older you get, the more, the more thrilling it gets because the harder it gets. Oh, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I've thought an awful lot this year about not playing anymore. And, uh, you know, after today and the way I played and uh, uh, great as these people were, you know, you got to keep playing. Listen to them. Jack, Jack, Jack. You know, it's like an Ohio State football game. It's You've great. just won the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Thanks. Now, let's talk a little bit about next year. It's Marion. And I know you even haven't had a chance to think too much about it, but will we see you at Marion? Oh, yeah, you'll see me at Marion without question. <laughs> there will be no question about that. Jack, soak it up. It's one of the biggest moments ever in the history of golf. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it.